everyone! So I don't think that it's news to any of you that I like to do my nails. Um, I guess if you're new here, welcome. It would be new to you that I like to do my nails, but now you know. So today I wanted to show you guys how I like to make my own nail barrier. I guess that's what you would call it. It's basically the stuff that you put around your nails like on the skin to avoid getting nail polish all over your skin that you had to clean up later. So I'm going to show you guys how I make my own nail barrier stuff or skin barrier stuff I guess is technically the more correct term. So yeah, let's get started. You'll need an empty bottle, liquid latex. Okay, so I'm using stuff that is probably a little bit pricier than what you'd want to do, which is masking fluid for art. Usually you use this for watercolors. I just had this laying around and it's essentially liquid latex. I think it may have some additives to help it not mess up your paper when you use it, maybe, but I'm not sure. I can probably test out masking fluid versus straight up liquid latex sometimes if you guys are interested. It definitely does have liquid latex in it though because it has a latex allergy warning on the bottle. And speaking of allergies, Obviously, if you have a latex allergy, this project, unfortunately, is not for you. I'm not sure what an alternative could be, though. Sorry. And you'll also need Prolux powder and or glitter. This is optional, but I like to add stuff like that so that you can easily see where you've applied the barrier. You can also use liquid latex colorants, but I just prefer to use this powder stuff because I usually have some laying around just from random crafting and stuff. Start with a nice, clean bottle. You can buy empty nail polish bottles, but mine is actually a used bottle of Sechevite that I had laying around. I like to keep my empty nail polish bottles sometimes, so I can use them for stuff like this, or mix up Franken polishes, or whatever. If you're using a used bottle, like me, just make sure to clean it out well. I pour a little bit of nail polish remover, about halfway or less, close the bottle, shake it to clean out as much of the old polish as I can, Pour it out and then repeat until the bottle is nice and clean. Then leave it open until the bottle is totally dried out. Shake the liquid latex well, then carefully pour it into the bottle. If you have a tiny funnel or something like that, you may want to use that. I just try to be as careful as I can when I'm pouring. I usually end up getting a little bit of liquid latex on the lip of the bottle. Take care not to fill it up too high. You'll need room to add the mix-ins and account for the brush when you close the bottle. And then you're done. Just kidding. Actually, you could be if you really wanted to, but like I said, I like to add stuff to color it. And actually, if you did just want to use straight up liquid latex, you could just use it straight out of the bottle using a brush. It's just kind of nice to put it into one of these used nail polish bottles because it comes with a brush that is pretty much going to be designated for the liquid latex anyway. So yeah. So I'm using gold Prolex powder. I added a couple scoops using my nail scraper tool thing. Again, if you have a funnel and you want to use it, you can. Or you can make a little one out of paper for this since it's just dry powder. I put a couple scoops and then I decided to add a little bit of glitter for fun. And maybe because I was inspired by a certain nail barrier brand that has a nice holographic glitter in it. Close the bottle and shake it up good. And that's it really super easy. Here's a little test so you can see how it looks when it dries. I probably could have added more glitter because it's almost non-existent, but whatever. I think there's enough of the gold powder that it kind of does what I wanted it to do, which is to color it so that I know where it is when I apply it on my fingers. To use this stuff, paint it around your nails and let it dry. I like to add another layer of the barrier to make it easier to remove later. Once that's dry, you can do whatever techniques you want where the polish will get all over your fingers. In this case, I'm doing water marbling. You can also use it when doing sponged gradients or nail stamping. Then you just peel the nail barrier off and, well, this is better than if there was no barrier. It's probably just my water marbling technique, but I usually have to clean up a bit more on my finger. But at least I don't need to use a little paintbrush to clean up right up against my nail. 
whenever I'm doing the sponged gradients, this barrier works really well because I guess I have more control doing the sponge, so I don't get it as high up on my finger, so I don't need to do any cleanup with that at all, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was a pretty easy one. If you did like this video, then please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all of that good stuff. Here's a featured project from the Cheslin DIY hashtag. If you want to have your stuff featured here, then hashtag on Instagram or Twitter, Cheslin DIY. I love periodically checking through there and seeing what you guys have done, how you guys use my tutorials to make your own stuff. It's pretty cool. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, the links to those will be down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you like my videos and have learned something from them, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me continue to make them. It's totally optional, I'll still be making videos either way, it just helps me be able to put out better stuff. A link will be down below, or you can just click up here in the corner.